alkylation of terminal alkynes is taking an alkyne and adding carbon to it. So if we have, let's say, a generic alkyne right here, let's say, let's draw it, let's draw it out for this one, okay? So we see that this is terminal, and then this alkyne right here would be internal. So we have to be working with uh, uh, terminal alkynes because we need this proton. And that will make sense once we go through the mechanism here. Now, what we want to do is treat it with some reagents to convert this terminal alkyne into a internal alkyne. And we'll just do a little subscript right there to distinguish there. So do you see here we have an R, so let's just count that as a carbon. One, two, three carbons in the, our starting material, and at the end, we have four carbons. So we're just adding an alkyl group. That's what alkylation is, adding that R, that green one. Now, in order for that transformation to occur, we have to do this, step, this reaction in two steps. Step one, you have to treat it with sodium hydride. And sodium hydride acts as a base to rip off this proton to make the alkanide species. And then step two, you're going to treat that with a alkyl halide, so R1X. Now, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine, not dealing with fluorine. So in our first step here, what happens a proton transfer here, we can represent this sodium hydride as a hydride. So we could look at it in this way, like that, an H minus. And that H minus is going to use the lone pair there and come in and abstract that proton and put the electrons onto the carbon like so. So now we're going to have this right there. And that is called alkanide. Let's make sure I spell it right here. That's the alkanide ion. Okay. What's also on this side here? Plus H2 gas. That hydrogen, abstracting that hydrogen, is going to make hydrogen gas. So if we wanted to color code it, it would look like this. Like that. Hydrogen gas, H2. So that is step one right there. Now we need to uh, take a look at the second step right here. That's Rx. And so for our purposes, let's just do a alkyl bromide. Can you already envision what's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? We're going to invoke a SN2 mechanism here. Because this is electron rich, that carbon's electron poor. So we will invoke a SN2 mechanism to lead us to our product right there. Okay. I also want to stress one really important thing is whenever you form carbon-carbon bonds in organic chemistry, that's a big deal because forming carbon-carbon bonds has proven to be difficult, not impossible, but it's a challenge. Nature does it very well. Chemists, we try our best. And so whenever you see a carbon-carbon bond forming reaction, in the back of your mind, think, okay, this is really important. 